What's up everyone? I am going to build a Rails application which helps manage video description. So on YouTube, uh, you'll notice that like most of the descriptions, if you jump in here on, uh, on my page, are just like super not uh, informative at all and not useful at all. Um, and so I wanna go through and make a tool that can like bulk update several videos uh, and add information like links to resources, links to um, various things, and maybe even update thumbnails. So here's the project plan, or, or here's the things that I would want in a video description manager. So it should support some sort of templates. Um, it should support bulk updating all the descriptions on a channel or all the descriptions, um, let's say like uh, all descriptions, um, on a channel or all descriptions um, on a playlist so that you could like pick those individually. You should be able to also just update an individual description um, and then in, like passing information about one or many presenters that are in the video with like social links or uh, you know job titles, things like that links to resources, um, ideally maybe like a table of contents which shows you the chapter markers. Uh, and then tags and thumbnails would be great to automate, but kind of going to save that for later. So the idea is that uh, I'm going to create a Rails application. We'll deploy it to Heroku. And initially, it'll be quite simple. We will just create a CRUD application for updating um, a bunch of different information about a video. Uh, and then hopefully just spitting out just the text for the description based on these, these things. So... Um, yeah, I almost wonder if the templates should also be like channel wide versus playlist wide. Um, maybe we can just copy it from a channel to a playlist. But the idea for a, a template would be that at the bottom you always have, maybe you always have a link to support or you always have a link to something. So um, that's kind of the idea. And if you want to follow along, great. I'm going to put a link to the code in the, um, in the description. Uh, and then also we'll just kind of go with it and we'll see how far we get. And um, maybe in the future, we'll do another episode where we can add to this or uh, add additional features. Also, I do want to try to use the YouTube API in order to update some videos. So um, this will be kind of like a combo situation where we're doing both like a Rails CRUD app, but also with a little bit of API interaction to update on YouTube. Um, so I'm going to say Rails new uh, video. Um, Let's see, video descriptions or video automations. Um, no tests initially. So I'm going to use Postgres. Uh, I'm going to use just like raw HTML and uh, normal like Rails routes to keep things super, super simple. It's just going to be like a CRUD app. Um, there's not going to be any like React or anything. Um, just kind of like really, really basic client because that's all we really need. Uh, okay. So in here, we are, let's, let's see. So let's just fire this up. Actually, we've got a rake db migrate or db create db migrate. There's no migrations right now, but um, that'll create the database. Uh, and then we will need a video, so uh, YouTube Video API. So in the YouTube Video Data API, they let you find all of the videos um, by playlist ID, I believe. Um, you can also use like this search API to find all the videos. Um, but yeah, so there's another thing, there's another piece of this that we, we're gonna need to like OAuth into the YouTube API. Um, so we will need to figure that piece out also. Um, but what I wanted to look at in a video is like, what are the things that we might be interested in on the video object itself? And so the, the YouTube API returns videos as, uh, as JSON in these kind of snippets and the ID is gonna be a string ID and that like when you drill into a video and you see this watch V equals, the, the content that's after the V equals, that's like the ID of the video. Um, so we're going to want a, a, a model here for a video and it's going to have the YouTube ID or I might call it external ID. Um, that's a, a common practice, but this time I'm just going to use 
YouTube ID, and that's gonna be a string value. Um, and then I also want to have, um, the, the video has like a title and a description, um, the existing description maybe, uh, and then it probably also has like a playlist and such. Let's see, let's just go through the, the snippet here. So it has when it was published, the channel ID, title description. So um, yeah, I'm, th I'm trying to think if we want to persist the title locally, or if we wanna just allow the title be something that's edited in the Rails app and then later synced to, um, to the YouTube video. So let's just, we'll store title here. I think description is gonna be a derived value. We're not actually gonna ever store the raw description. Um, and then we will want possibly a list of tags. Um, and we can do, I think we can say array like this with Postgres as our back, backing store. Um, duration, definition, caption, license, allowed restrictions, content ratings. I uh, don't really care about any of those. Upload status, um, that might be interesting is to, to have some of this status information um, so that we could see whether or not it was uploaded. Uh, maybe we can go back, we can always go back and add that later. Recording details, file details, file name, size, type, container. Um, all right, let's see. Processing errors, processing warnings, live stream. Okay, so I think this might be what we can start with. Um, but the things that we wanted to be able to support was uh, some sort of template. So I think we're gonna need like a video description template object. Uh, we wanna be able to bulk update. So this is just gonna be like logic that is built into our like API calls or whatever, like the logic that we use to interact with the API. Uh, updating the same thing and then passing information about one or many presenters in the video. So along with a video, I think um, we will want like video presenters to be another model that we'll have. So we'll have like video, we'll have video template or like video or description template. Uh, and for this description template, I think we could use like ERB or we could use um, some like, uh, there's tons of different templating languages like, um, uh, mustache or whatever handlebars um, something we can use just like some nice template where we write it in we we build the template and then we can add like where we want to render certain pieces of the template that'll be kind of interesting um, and then we're gonna want like a video presenter and that is gonna have a, a one to or a one video to many video presenters um, and a video presenter, okay, let's see, links to resources, so video resource, and that'll have like um, the URL and it'll be related back to the video. Uh, and then table of contents, that, um, should that just be a dis like a table, um, table of contents, just as like a, a text blob maybe? Um, and yeah, so videos have a set of tags. So we probably want to be able to manage these two things um, later. So for now, I'm just gonna keep it, keep it like this. We'll, we'll use these four models um, to, to build up the, the actual stuff here. So is this gonna be enough when we're actually fetching the video, updating the video? Um, we might want like a last synced at or something, but we can come back and add those later. So we're just kind of like building out the data model that's gonna back the application. So then we're also gonna want um, a, uh, let's see, what do we say? Video presenter. And this is gonna have a video references. So a video presenter will uh, belong to an individual video. Um, Potentially we could create a separate object called a presenter so we can reuse the same presenters over and over. Actually, yeah, let's do that, let's do that. So we're gonna have a presenter and that'll have like a name, Twitter handle, um, LinkedIn, uh, what else do we have, a role. Um, okay, and a presenter is just hanging around out there. Uh, let's see, so we wanna also create a video presenter 
and that's going to be a this is like the person who's on screen who's presenting like the demo um, person or whoever the voice is behind the video and this will be a video references that'll create an id or like a, a call in the database called video underscore id and that'll be a foreign key to the id on video objects i don't know if i'm going to get in trouble with presenter because that's like a, a design pattern or whatever um but okay so a video presenter um and then yeah it, it's just so this for now is just going to be like a join table between video and presenter um, if we want later on, we might be able to say like, you know, how much time they were on screen or something. I don't know, something interesting like that. Or if whether or not they were the guest or the host. Yeah, let's just say role. And then if we wanted to later, we could say guest or host or something. Um, and should we make it an integer? Actually, I'm going to save that for later because we could add to that if we want. Um, but for now, let's stick with this. Okay. So we actually do, we ended up with um, presenter and video presenter. And then we also want um, a video resource, Rails G model video resource. And this is gonna have a URL to the resource, a title, and uh, so I'm thinking like, when you're making a, a video like this that's talking about code, you might have a resource that's like the link to the code. And we're gonna want the video references. Oh, okay. Um, what else do we want? Uh, description template. So Rails G model description template. And this is gonna have like the template content. Um, I don't know if, the, uh, yeah, this, so it should be text. Uh, I think that should be okay. Uh, but how does this actually apply or like, how is this actually used by videos? So when you're working with a video, I think you need to assign it a description template to use. So we might need to go back and add a description template ID to the video object. Um, and maybe we could support several different renderers for a description template, but for now we'll just keep it easy. Um, all right, so we've got our description template. Okay, so Let's go into all these migrations that were just created. So in DB migrate, uh, we have a bunch of different migrations. So in videos, when videos are created, we're gonna have an, uh, a YouTube ID. Um, should we make that required? Uh, hmm. For now, for now, let's just leave it as is. But let's uh, add an index on videos, YouTube ID. Um, unique true so that it can't be we can't have like multiple videos in the database all referencing the same YouTube video because we don't want to like overwrite the same one uh, multiple times so we're going to add an index on, on YouTube ID let's actually make it null false um, and same with title null no mm, yeah and then this needs to be like Array true, I believe. Let's see. So uh, working with arrays, rails. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, array column rails. Let's see here. Oh, wow. Okay, you can use it. No, okay. Subjects, text, okay. Uh, array true default. Okay, so array true default is empty string. And yeah, okay, so that should work. Table of contents, we'll leave that blank. It always takes me a long time to go through and add the chapter markers, um, but maybe we should also call this chapter markers instead of that. And I'm also like a little bit torn about whether or not the chapter markers should actually be its own model that has the ID and the timestamp as separate things um, because then we could, we could add those later. If we had some sort of video editor or something, we could like create the chapter markers at specific points in the video. Um, hmm. Okay, yeah, let's make, let's, is that gonna be a pain? 
For now, let's just keep it as text. And then later, if we wanted to, we can improve this by making a model and making some UI by which you can create chapter markers. All right, the next one we created was presenters. They have to have a name. Um, they have to have a, or they don't have to have Twitter handle or LinkedIn or role, but that's fine. Um, and then we will, we don't need to index on the name. People have the same name, that's fine. Um, video presenters, cool, that ended up working out great. And then we'll add an index um, of video, pre on the video presenters table of video and presenter. Actually, I think we have to use ID, video underscore ID and presenter ID, unique, true. This will prevent at the database level, this should prevent um, multiple presenters being added or attached to the same video for some reason. So we're gonna have just like a uniqueness constraint on this uh, video ID and presenter ID. Uh, okay, so video resources, this has to have uh, a title and a URL. And we want to, hmm. I mean, we could technically make uh, make a, a unique column, which is on video and URL to enforce the uniqueness of like, you can't have the same URL for the same video multiple times, but uh, whatever, we'll just leave that a little bit loosey-goosey. For the template, uh, null false, um, and yeah, that should be good. Okay, let's run the migrations and see what breaks. <laughs> Rake db uh, migrate. All right, uh, unknown variable, where are we at? Let's see, create video resources.rb. Um, null, oh. Okay, and I'm, tr I'm trying to remember that we wanna add um, a relation between the description template and the video. So Rails G migration add description template to videos. And then I can say description template references. And I think that might work. Uh, you kind of have to, <laughs> the stars have to align a little bit for that to work. Oh, nice, okay. So I think that worked, okay, cool. Um, yeah, great. Okay, so now we should have our database migrated. Um, okay. All right, the next step I wanna do is um, go update all of the models. 